All right, folks, uh, it's Bruce here from the Coasters Club, and, and today I'm with a coaster, Merv Grewer. Now, Merv will tell you he wasn't born on the coast, so he's not a coaster. Don't take any notice of it. Merv, thanks so much for taking the time to talk to me. I really appreciate it. Now, what's your full name? Mervyn Allen Grewer. There we go, folks. Yeah. Did, you, uh, did you have a nickname when you were growing up? Uh, not really. Uh, I um, the only nickname I ever had was when I was doing my uh, printing apprenticeship, and uh, they called me Murphy. Murphy, oh yeah. no! But that was that was the only. <laughs> other than that, no, I've never had a nickname. What uh, what year were you born? Uh, Nineteen thirty-five. So what does that make you now? Eighty-three. You're looking all right. Oh well. <laughs> and you're, you're still cycling, aren't you? Yeah, we're well, trying. Goodness me. Whereabouts were you born? In, in Auckland. And what, what part of Auckland? Oh, um, just in central Auckland. The hospital we hit, w I was born in was right in the main drag of Auckland, actually, called St Helens. It's still there, isn't it? St I Helens? don't know. I wouldn't know that. that, that. Now, who, who were your mum and dad? Um, my dad was um, Alan, and he was originally a seaman and my mum was a um, um, Mabel and she was a sharp. What's a sharp? Oh, she, a sharp. It was her, oh, her, her, son, her, her maiden name? Yes. What did uh, what did they do? So your dad was a seaman? Yeah, he was a seaman originally. He yeah. finished up as a carpenter and uh, my mum was, um, was a, um, a pastry cook or she worked in the in that kind of and and uh, where where did they meet? Did they ever tell you? No, never. Didn't, no. Don't know. I was trying to think about that, and uh, no, there's no way I could I could put it together. The, the, it's amazing how much they didn't tell us. Yes, exactly. It's it is. Yeah. So when you were you know you were born in uh, in Auckland, can you remember the first home you went to when you when you came home? Where did you uh, Where did you go? Can Can you remember it? Oh, I can remember the first house we were in uh, vaguely, and it was um, it was oh, I, I don't know the Newland Newland area. And what sort of house was it? Can oh, you remember anything about the house? Very strange house, very narrow, right, and uh, two stories, and uh, that's about all I can remember about it. S sounds uh, Sounds very Aucklandy. <laughs> yeah, when you when you were a kid, what did you what did you do for fun? For fun. Hmm. What were that? What were the I, moments? I you know, swam. Yeah. And I cycled. Oh, nothing's changed. No, <laughs> no. That's exactly. It. Here, here we are, eighty-three years later, and it's and it's still going on. Yeah. Move. Was there? Uh, can you recall when you were being brought up? Was there a chore you hated to do? Uh, mow lawns probably, and one you I liked it. I can't think of it. I can't think of any other ones. And and one that you really like to do. Um, have a lot of fun. Yeah, that's about it. I can't remember anything I like to do. <laughs> when you were um, when you were very young, did you read? Um, no, not exclusively. I didn't have time. Too busy. More time outdoors. Whereabouts did you attend primary school? Um, primary school was in Cornwall Park. And is that uh, in Auckland? In, in Auckland, yeah. And many kids there? Uh, yeah, about a 600 roll I think they had. Wow. It was quite, a, quite a big school. Do, uh, do you still know any of the kids that were at primary school with you? No. no. All, all well gone? Or no, well, you know, either. Either that or because we left Auckland, I never. So, whereabouts did you attend high school? High school was in Sen Memorial Technical College in Auckland. Sen Memorial Technical College? Yeah. Well, that's a mouthful, isn't it? Yeah. And did you enjoy it? Uh, yes and no. I used to go uh, two and a half days a week and stay away two and a half days a week. How did you get away with that? I don't know, but they, I think they got horribly 
No, how, how can I say it? <laughs> they didn't, didn't, they got, no. Well, yeah, I'll have to say it. They got horribly pissed off with me. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, so, and so they let, let me get away with it in the end. Oh, I love it. Yeah. I love it. So after you uh, finished with uh, your high school, did you go to a university or a technical college of any sort? No, straight into an apprenticeship. And what was the uh, what was the apprenticeship for printing? As a uh, compositor, hand compositor. And so, how much of your life was devoted to the printing printing industry? Um, I suppose uh, the sixty five. I suppose I stopped. I had started up my own business. And it got bought out and uh, finished up in Australia. Okay. Because I was printing for Whole Proof New Zealand Limited. And then you shifted to Australia? No, no, no. Oh, it, oh the they, business did? They bought me out and, and, and uh, well, they took 50% of the business savings for Australia. Yep. So going back to school, did you have a favourite subject? How did you, I mean, printing sort of leads from somewhere to... What, what was well, your favourite subject? I, I, I joined the typography class, uh, which was um, uh, printing because I wanted to be an artist. And um, but slowly but surely the printing took over from art. Wow. Yeah. Did you, can you recall a teacher that you, you look back and go, he was pretty good or she was pretty good? No. <laughs> This is a nice short answer there. <laughs> what uh, what activities at school? Did you play a sport? I guess swimming and cycling. Oh yeah, mainly cycling. Yeah, because I used to ride to ride to school on my on my racing bike, and uh, I, I more or less started racing when I was twelve, which was which was when when first year at high school. Oh wow. So, um, yeah. How would, uh, you know, going back to uh, high school days, how would a close friend of yours described you? How would, he, how would he have described you as a young adult? Were you a cheeky bugger? Were you in trouble all the time? Or were you? No, they probably thought I had wheels for legs. I think that was about it. <laughs> I didn't have much time for friends because I was training all the time. When when we um, we move on to as a child and as a young man, did you ever have any burning ambition to be something? What was your what was your drive? Cyclist. Always a cyclist. Yeah. When we've talked about your first job, we did an apprenticeship as uh, um, as a printer. Um, what happened after that? Because a man's got to eat. Oh well. Mm. Yeah, I, I carried on with my with printing and and uh, went to Rotorua uh, just after we'd been married and worked for a printer in Rotorua, back two printers in Rotorua because uh, the one across the road offered more money, so I, I took it. And um, um, at that time, we were we had a band going in in Rotorua and. Uh, an Auckland crowd heard us, so and they gave us a job in Auckland. So uh, I became a full-time musician. Wow! And you're a good lady. What year did you get married? Uh, no, no, nineteen fifty-eight. Oh, good year. Yeah, we just got the marriage certificate actually. And what was her full name? Uh, Colleen Dawn Smith. Oh, you tell me you're joking. Yeah, yeah. My mum was Dawn Smith. Yeah, was she? Yeah. Well, goodness. Oh, seriously. <laughs> oh, dear, yeah. dear. Now, so you, you're, you're obviously into uh, cycling is a big thing. Now, I've done a wee bit of research, and it, it appears not only uh, were you keen on it, you're actually pretty good. Oh, well, kind of. <laughs> so yeah. t tell me about your, uh, your cycling experience. Oh, well, I think I've really... Went until about I was uh, twenty something, from twelve twelve to twenty, and uh, during that time I represented New Zealand at uh, what they called the Pan Pacific Games, which was 
Which was that? quite interesting because we, the, the year I went away, they were in Fiji and we rode on the grass track. Like I was a track rider, but <coughs> yeah, I rode on the grass in Fiji and in a race and had a crash. And so that was the end of my representing New Zealand. And how many races did you race for New Zealand? Do you know? Oh, just in the on just on, on the, the Pan grass. Pacific. Yeah, there was there was three races. Uh, a half mile, a mile, and a two mile. That'd be a pretty proud moment. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, it was. That's what big stuff. Represent your country is a big thing. And so, what happened? You come back to Auckland. Yeah. From and what happened from a cycling point of view? Oh, I, I still took part in a lot of racing. We um a, a, a big race that were, that um you know were really can remember we had a three-day race on Western Springs which was the cycling track in Auckland yeah and uh, we came second and they and uh, was you had three riders and you rode 24 uh, three days uh, had to have somebody on the track all the time three continuous days yes, yes. how many teams oh I c couldn't tell you lots oh mm, no, there'd only be about 10. You'd have been pretty difficult to deal with at day three, wouldn't you? No, well, yeah, I wasn't actually. I was I was actually the what they call the donkey man of the team because I was also a road rider and uh, road riders were, were, you know, we spent a lot of time on the road and um, by the time we finished, the other two were worse off than I was because I'd spent all that time on the road. How, uh, how old were you when you decided to to retire? I'll get to where you come to the coast shortly, but when you decided to retire, just what, what sort of age were you? Retire, what you mean? Retire? Well, you, you've never really retired, but I mean, was there a point where you said, okay, I'm retired? No, no, the government did it for me. Oh, the compulsory they, retirement at 65? When they closed down Hokitika Airport. Oh, um, yes. I was the airport, or well, not the airport manager, the airport superintendent, which was the same as now you've got an airport manager. Yep. And my job was in the tower, and um, and uh, they took um, air, air traffic, or, or what we call flight service in those days, away and from all the small airports, and that was the end of my working life. Tell me, you went from uh, Auckland, you went to Rotorua. Yeah. When did you get to the coast? When did we get you? Um, 1970, oh no, 1968. So I started work in 68. Did you? A good yeah, year. Yeah. So I'd you... been working hard by then. <laughs> yeah. So you come to Hokitika? Yeah, no, Haast. Ah. We went from Auckland to Haast. What did you do in Haast? I was, a, was the... Um, Aerodrome superintendent of the RC field. Oh, I had no idea. What sort of planes come in? Um, <laughs> very few. <laughs> I guess the Actually, Domini? Uh, no, Dominis are gone by then. Right. Uh, they were mainly all just Cessnas, 185, 172s, and, and choppers, plenty of chopper work. But my main job, really, why I was transferred down there was to do the weather. Uh, because uh, the, the weather was a big thing coming from Haast and the other thing was that you had to be a Morse operator uh, because all the messages that were sent out from Haast were in Morse code. In 1968? Yep. Goodness me. Yeah. Goodness me. And so where to from Haast? I can take it. And what, what, roughly what year was that? 72. Okay, and so you become the superintendent at the Hokitika Airport? Oh, was no, that, was that the right name? Two I C then. Two I C. Who was yeah. who was the boss then? Um, oh, ask a hard question. Of course. <laughs> um, Stevens, um, Max Stevens. Right. Yeah. And so, the airport. It's a lot busier today, I guess. Yeah. Um, so mainly. We still had the friendships coming in. Yes. Yeah, they used to come in twice a day. It's been pretty consistent, the air travel, has, hasn't yes, it? Yes, it has. Over a long period yeah. of time. Merv, um, when did you first start dating? Oh. 
Oh, that's a hard question too. <laughs> when I was probably twelve, <laughs> it, it's been. It was. It was the worst part of my life. Was was girls because it gotten gotten the way of my. Cycling and uh, cycling and <laughs> yeah, that, that's what killed my cycling life. Oh no! <laughs> well, mind you, that it's probably not a bad thing. Oh no, I finished up with a good wife. You did indeed. Yeah. Now tell me, uh, can you remember your first date? Uh, a kind of formal date. Uh, oh goodness! Oh, probably when I was fifteen, I think. Yeah. Oh, I, I can't can't remember much about that. No, I think and we're all the same. A lot, a lot of water, water had gone under the bridge <laughs> even from 12 to 15. Now, when did you meet your, your, your present spouse? Um, when I was 19. And do you remember when you went on your first date with her? Uh, yes, I've even got a picture of it. And um, we, we went to the, to the Winter Gardens in Auckland. And um, that, that was a real... That was the big place to go to. And so, what did you, what did you do? It did, was it a picnic or was it a an... it was a dance? Started oh. at eleven o'clock at night. Oh wow! And went till two in the morning. Yeah. And it was a great night. Oh yeah, yeah. How would you, um how would you describe your wife? How long have you been married now? Um, what was it? Oh, we we've, we've just been uh, having a letter sent to the Queen. Because we're sixty years. Con well, congratulations! Yeah, yeah. That's that is fantastic. Yeah. And have you had have you had a letter from the Queen? No, no, no. Yet. My daughter's just uh, just she, organising she's it. Organising it. Yeah. Oh, this is the first time that I've done an interview where someone's been married sixty years. <laughs> yeah. It is, and I've done quite a few. What What do you uh, What do you most admire about your wife? Um, well, recently, because of the things that have happened in our life. Uh, I admire all women that are married to men that just toddle off anywhere and, and they do the housework and the cooking and all that kind of thing. Yeah. So um, they, the, the women actually do a, a, a great job. And so in, in, in your case, what, what would be the strength? That if, if you had to pick a strength out that your, your good lady's got, what would it be? And you know, I know she's she's a bit poorly these days. Yeah. Um, but what what would the what would the strength be? What would the thing be that you you really admire most about her? Oh, looking after our kids. Yeah. Yeah. yeah there's no greater there's no greater quality, is there? Yeah. Um. How long after you, did you have children? Yeah, two children, two girls. How how long? Um, when did you find out you were going to be a parent? For the first time, not long after we got married. <laughs> right. Okay. And, you, and so you had two children. Yeah. And and what do they do? What are what are their names? Um, Teresa, who is um, she's works for an accountant in Ashburton, and um, the other daughter is um, uh, well, she was originally a farm lady down at Harry Harry, and right. that's Marie, and uh, they now in West Melton. Fantastic. So they're both still in good health. Yep. Oh, that's that's a blessing. Yeah. Do Do you recall when uh, one of the girls had to go to school for the first time? Uh, no, not really. For some For no. some people, it was a bit of an event. Uh, yeah. Now, now tell I was them, probably doing other things. You'd be out uh, swimming or or cycling, cycling. or playing <laughs> music. Oh, I love it. <laughs> yeah. With With the music, how many bands did you did you play in? Lots of bands. I I um, um I started off playing uh, drums when I was seven years old, and um, uh, by eight I was teaching drums because all the men that were that were teaching in those days were taken off to war, and I finished up as the the senior drummer at eight years old. Oh, that that's what a great story! <laughs> and so, did you ever play with anyone famous? Oh, quite a few. Quite a few of the New Zealand bands I've played with. Any names that you can you can recall? Oh, no, not really. Uh, there was lots of them. Yeah. Uh, because I was actually what they called a session drummer, and um, if they were doing a recording, they would kind of get me to go in and play drums with them if if their 
if the drummer was sick, yep. it would, um, you know, I would go in and play. Um, so really, I, I, I spent more time uh, playing with different bands because of the, the drummers being not available. Did uh, did you meet any famous uh, uh, mus musicians or um, pop stars? The, the the best one is which who was uh, um, my favourite was the Dave Brubeck Quartet, and um, I, I met the drummer um, at a, a after show booze up. Of course. <laughs> As you, as you do. Yes. Now, now look, um, going back, did you meet your grandparents, any of the four of them? No. So No, they were from... Oh, oh yes, my grandparents. My, my On my father's side, no, because they were in UK. Right. But my, uh, my mother's grandparents were um, Scottish, and uh, they, they were both from New Zealand. And, and can you recall it, them, anything they said or or what they did for well, to earn well, a living? Yeah, my grandfather was a pastry, pastry cook. Right. Had a business in in um, uh, Surrey Crescent in Auckland, but he also had a uh, what was in those days quite a big farm, and it was a, called Sharp's Bush, and it was in Henderson Valley. Oh wow! Yeah. What a shame he still doesn't have it. Uh -huh. <laughs> do you remember in? Uh, do you remember coming across someone who was very old? Was there an old person round when you were a young fella? The oldest person that you can think of. Never had time. Never had time for that That's sort of on thing. The, on my bike. I, I love it. So, move. What do you consider the most important inventions that you've seen in your lifetime? You know, it's been a big lifetime. What oh, What are the things that have really changed? Computers. Computers are marvellous. The, the equipment we've got now, I mean, I've got a little room just over from us that, that you uh, haven't seen probably, and it's got a computer in it, and um, I, I can, well, at the moment I'm doing a... a, a, a um, a booklet for the Ross swimming pool, and to um, for them to um, for anybody can can go in and operate the pool, and oh, like, so an operations manual type thing. Yes. Oh, okay. And all the information I've got has come off the computer, and um, yes, yeah, it's, it's amazing. Actually, the Ross pool's a beauty, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Mind you, our hokey one is too. Well, the Ross pool is better than the Hokitika pool. Is it? Yes, most most definitely. Well, uh, why? The facilities um, are amazing there, yeah. Ross. Yeah, they are. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're a pretty neat community. Yeah. Now tell me, when did you first get a refrigerator? Can you remember no. getting a fridge? No, I can remember, remember a... a a little box thing that you put water on the top and it kept everything cool and that's about the only thing I can remember that was it was made of plaster of Paris or something like that Wow what about your first TV uh, no I can't even remember that what about your first car first car yes I can remember that it was a Morris Minor 1928 and it had a fabric body Wow. And I used it for hill climbs up, Mount, uh, up uh, One Tree Hill. Oh, so you raced it? Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, Merv. And, until the body <laughs> fell off. And, and what, what was the car after that one? Um, were, you, were you a car man? Oh, not greatly. I mean, I enjoy a, a, a good car. But the car I've got now is really quite amazing yeah the one the, the, the latest ones are just wonderful aren't they? yes, yes. You know, the um how's the world different today for a child than it was when you were growing up oh much easier i think much easier yeah, today yeah yeah much easier i mean we had to we had to do lots of work that 
kids don't have to do now. And it was work, it was work that was, you needed to do to be able to eat. Well, even mowing lawns, I mean, you, you used to push mower instead of a motor mower. Uh, no, good point. Yeah, yeah, well, I mean, that, even a small thing like that has changed now. Kids have got right on motors. Yeah, it's a crazy world, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Did you, did you come across a person in your life that you met that changed your direction? Someone who came along and had a real impact on you? Probably one of the guys that I uh, had as an instructor in the Navy. He was um, he he was a very hard man, but he you know did it. He he looked after me quite well, pushed me, pushed me, really. Yeah. And um, it was through him that I you know rose in the ranks in the Navy. Well, we haven't talked about your Navy career. <laughs> when did that start? Um, when I when C and T compulsory military military training right and um, I did my when I was just turning 19 I went into the I got pushed into the Navy I, my dad wanted me to go in the army but uh, for some reason I went into the Navy and um, and um, yeah that's when it started and it lasted for 14 years I so you were in the Navy for 14 years yeah, I was I was in the what they call the volunteer reserve. Yes, but the, um, I spent eight years of voluntary reserve at sea, so it was quite it's significant. Yeah, not very many volunteer reserve people did eight years. Actually, that's, that's incredible. So, yeah. what sort of boats um, or ships? Uh, what, what, what did well, you sail on? Oh. Um, uh, Black Prince was the first one, uh, which is a cruiser, and then um, then the frigates. We went down to the uh, Antarctic and frigates, and um, the old Endeavour, the old wooden Endeavour, down to the Antarctic. That was a sailing ship. No, no, no. She was a she was a wooden. Um, I think they originally was a whale whale boat. I'm not quite right. sure, but she had a. She had a um, crow's nest, I can remember that, because the skipper, who was Peter Silk, used to get up and sing La Traviata uh, <laughs> as we were going through the ice floes. <laughs> so you've been to Antarctica yeah. once, twice, several times? Um, oh, well, I'd only once on the Endeavour, and that's when, um, when um, Hillary, we took Hillary down to the ice, and... Um, but other so, times, so Ed Hillary. Yeah, yeah. Well, that was the, when he did the trans, uh, uh, the trans and sub Atlantic, um, whatever they yeah. called it. And this is when they took the tractors across. Yes. Oh yeah. wow. Yeah, and he, Peter Phil, Sir Peter Fultz, or whatever his name was. Yeah. He he started on the other end, and they crossed in the middle, kind of thing. Actually, it, what was what was Sir Ed like? Oh, he was, he was, he was a beekeeper, he, you know, he was easy to talk to. Yeah. He, and he talked about bloody bees all the time. <laughs> so, a pretty pretty normal sort of a fella? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what's, he, it what, wasn't anything different. Move. what set him aside from, uh, <clears throat> from other adventurers? Oh, I think he just wanted to do things. He, he you know, like he climbed the... Um, Mount Everest. Mount and... Everest, because he wanted to do it. It was he wasn't a person that was looking for grandeur or anything like. He just wanted to do it. Oh, I love it. Yeah, oh, I love it. So, did you ever have you ever won the uh, special awards as an adult? Yeah, there's quite a few of them out on the wall. There. I saw a big pile there. Yeah. Any of them more special than the others? I guess they're all special. Oh, I think um, what. Two years ago, getting the New Zealander of the year, or year is it? Or the New Zealander, of whatever. Yep. It was quite a, you know, to be not even nominated for it was quite very special, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I, I think it's just it's probably a reflection of uh, how people think about you. 
yeah. you know, you, you wander, wander around our little town and uh, I don't know anyone who doesn't know you. <laughs> Mind you, that's probably no surprise, is it? Being in the swimming pool all the time. <laughs> now, Merv, can you, you've done a lot of travelling. You've been, you've been around all over the place. Is there a place and a time that you can remember where you went, this is just fantastic? We, we're, you know, has it been somewhere? What, what was Antarctic like? Was it like that or was it? Um, no, that was work, really, when you when you think of it. But when we were in the... Even going down there at times was quite a horrendous journey because the seas were massive. Well, we did a thing called um, um, the PNR point of no return for the for the flights going down, and we had to be at 60 South on the frigates, and the frigates weren't built for for the waves that were down there, and the waves 60 South was 60 foot waves. Wow! And um, they, I mean, you were working. That, that's you'd be working standing up, wouldn't you? Oh yeah, you had to, you, you rock and rolled all over the ship. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, when you look at the places that you've been, what's the most beautiful place you've been? Oh, Las Vegas. Was it? Why? Oh, oh it's just totally different. We, both Colin and I enjoyed LA here, oh well, Las Vegas. The uh, the sound of people winning is incredible, isn't it? Uh, yeah. the, the the alarms going off and money rattling and lights flashing and and it's it's uh, obviously you've been there. I have been there. Yes, I have been there. It, it was it's uh, it's pretty special, just the same, isn't it? Yes, it is. And yeah. and you know, what's the uh, what's the most single most memorable moment of your life? Scary or normal or whatever. Oh, I don't know. I, I couldn't even answer that. I've had a lot of them. You, you had any <laughs> scary moments? Um, were you were you physically probably in? when I was cycling? Some of the some of the. In fact, one of the most scariest moments is when when we used to have the um, um, mountain bike club here, and um, uh, finishing up in a gorse bush, and I didn't know how to get out of it. Wow. <laughs> just it, down the road from here. Oh, you just, did, you, did you just come off? Yeah, up in yeah, it? yeah. I was doing a single track. Um, Colin and I actually started up the mountain bike club here. And um, we used to race just over, over, over from here and um, down the bottom of the hill there. And we had single track down there and I was going down and slipped sideways and finished up in a uh, uh, gorse bush and didn't know how to get out of it. Oh, that would, that would be, that would hurt. It, it did. <laughs> <laughs> so it was, is Colleen a good cyclist as well? No, no. no she was just support. No, she was a supporter. N number one supporter. Yeah. yeah. I, I love it. The, um, w when you look back um, over your life, over your life uh, have there been any key lessons that you've learned that you could pass on to the, the many coasters who'll be watching this, especially a lot of young ones. Is there any, are there any basic lessons that you've learned, you know, where you go, this is a, this is a rule? Yeah, learn to swim. Well, there we go, folks. Yeah. Learn to swim. Your, your history with the, the swimming pools in Westland is, and will never be beaten by anybody. There's no, no question about that. Um, it's been a big part of your life, hasn't it? Yeah, really. Yeah. You've it started in 1972, and it's still going. I've got friends that are older than me that have been taught to swim by Merv Grew. So that, it's pretty fantastic. Your your connection with the the uh, swimming club, the number of people you've taught to swim, the administration side of swimming. It wouldn't have survived well it, it wouldn't be what it is today without you mm. the 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 hoka ticker pool you've spent hundreds of hours in there yeah you were mr boiler there for so many years <laughs> yeah. how did you keep that boiler going um yeah by strength shoveling coal 
and tons of it. Yes. But and and yet it was it was remarkably reliable, wasn't it? It was. Yeah. You know, I mean, when you when you look back, this is the odd days when it broke down or, you know, something had the worm packed up. But uh, you were the you were the sole charge. There was no one else helping you, was it? No. Oh, oh yes, there was. Yeah. Well, yeah, I never was, saw them. No, there was two. There, there was another who did it on my days off. Yeah, of course, but yeah. when you were working, it was uh, it was sole charge. Oh yeah, I, I had to make sure it kept going. Well, yeah. I, look, I can only I can only say from the many people that I know that that we, we'd have to thank you. Yeah. We'd have to thank you because without you, none of us would have got in the pool. Uh -huh. Would have been too cold. Yeah, well, it, oh, you won't remember the old boiler we had down there, but we used to have before that boiler, we had a wood boiler. And the swimming club had to go down if they wanted the temperature of the water to come up for a, for a contest. Um, they had to go down to the beach and, and get the wood to feed into the boiler. Right. So we used to have driftwood parties. Oh, if we had a, if we had a, a, a um, competition on. Oh, heaven's sake. <laughs> Merv, is there anything else that we can we can record here as we wind this up? Um, yeah, the best thing that ever happened to me was shifting from Auckland to Haast. Wow. To Haast? To Haast, yeah. Did the sand flies get you? No, no, we got used to that. The people, <laughs> and, and you recall, um, you know, a lot of the people in Haast, of course, recall you. Um, you, you recall many of them? Oh, yeah, yeah. The um, John that you had on. And the Nolans, my daughter, is still really great friends of all the Nolan girls. And, um, yeah, the Eglings and, uh, well, everybody down at Haas. Because so, I was on the school committee there too. So. Um, yeah. And that's the Hannah's Clearing School? The, the one at Hannah's Clearing? Or the, yes, yes. The, um, it's, a, it's a community where it's very close-knit, isn't it? Yes. They scrap amongst themselves, but if you come from the outside and fire a shot at them, they all unite and yeah. next thing you know, you're in deep trouble. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's pretty pretty amazing. Yeah. Any, anything yeah. else, Merv? No, not that I can think of. Well, look, I, I really want to thank you for taking the time to, <clears throat> excuse me, have a chat to me. And Coasters, we've got 22,500 members, roughly. Uh, this full interview will be up on the Coasters Club YouTube channel. So you've just got to type in Move Grewer, a coaster, and you'll be able to see the full interview. It'll be played in a series of six interviews on our Facebook channel. Uh, a copy will be sent to the Hokitika Museum on a memory stick, and of course, we'll send one to Move for him and his family. Um, Move, been a pleasure. What can we say other than thank you so much? Oh, well, thank you. I think you're doing a great job.